Good morning everyone and welcome to our Under the Stairs cupboard. We've done some talks from some pretty strange places over the past uh, week or so and perhaps this is the strangest. What do we do in these places? Well this is where we hide things that are important but we don't want people to see. So here we have our boiler that provides our heating and hot water to the house but it's pretty ugly and it's good to hide it away under the under the stairs cupboard. Here's our alarm system that protects our house. And again, it's it's important, but it's hidden away under here because it's not very attractive to look at, really, is it? Down here is our electric fuse box that provides the electricity for the house. Wow, that's important, isn't it? But we don't really want to see the fuse box. Behind me there is the ironing board. Here is our iron, our clothes errors, things that are useful, but we don't really want to see them, do we? And behind me is our shoe rack, which contains all those shoes that we wear for walking and running and everyday use. They're tucked away here where they're not seen. They are hidden from view. We all have a place like this, don't we? A place where we keep important things that we don't really want people to see. The other thing about these kind of places is that they can be a place of hiding for us too. When I was a child and we used to play hide and seek, the place I used to like to hide was the under the stairs cupboard in my parents' home. As a small child it felt a place of security, a place of being covered a place where no one could find me. It's interesting, isn't it, that hide and seek is one of the first games that children learn to play. And even teenagers love a good game of hide and seek, don't they? Our fusion groups certainly do. Right back at the beginning of humanity, when the relationship between God and human beings was broken by Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve's first response was to hide, to hide away where they hoped God wouldn't find them. But God came seeking for them. He came seeking for them so he could demonstrate his grace towards them. God found them in their hiding place. In John chapter 20, we find the disciples in a hiding place. In fact, it even uses the word locked. They were locked away. They were in lockdown, just like we're in lockdown today. Verse 19 tells us that they, the doors were locked for fear of the Jews. Verse 26 tells us that the doors were locked and behind those locked doors was Thomas with all his doubts. And yet Jesus appears to them in their place of hiding. Jesus comes to them in their place of lockdown. And he comes to move them from fear to faith. And in order to do that, he speaks some words to them. Twice they're recorded for us in this passage. Three times, actually. And those words are, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. They ne needed peace to calm their fears. And isn't that true for many of us today? In our fears, in our anxieties, we need God's peace. But what does that mean? How can Jesus bring us peace in our hiding place, in our lockdown, in our fears this morning. When Jesus says, peace I give to you, he's not talking about a warm, gooey feeling. He's not talking about putting a comfort blanket over us so that we can hide. He's speaking about something much more important than that. The word peace is the Jewish uh, idea of shalom. When you go into a Jewish house, you will often see that phrase over the door as you enter the home. Shalom, peace. 
But that word means more than just an, a nice emotional warm feeling. It means more than just words. The phrase shalom means wholeness, completeness, being in a place of blessing from God. Being in the place where our lives are fulfilled in relation to God's purposes. Being in a place where we're experiencing God's promises at work in our lives. Being in that place where we are being all that we were created to be. This is the peace that Jesus brings to the disciples. And it is a life transforming peace. It moves them from fear to faith. And Jesus wants us to know this life transforming peace this morning that will move us from fear to faith. Can he bring it to us today? Can he bring it to us in our hiding place? Can he bring it to us in our place of lockdown? I believe he can. Remember in John's Gospel right at the beginning we, met, we thought about those words that Jesus is the word became flesh who lived for a while among us. Jesus became flesh. That is, he knows what it's like to deal with fears. As he wrestled in prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane just hours before his death, he knew what it was like to face the fear of death and to bring it to his father. And he can relate to our fears this morning. He knows what we are going through. But he also not only comes in flesh, he comes as the word in flesh. Jesus didn't stop being God in the Garden of Gethsemane. He understood what it is to be human, but he didn't stop being God. And it is this unique identity of Jesus that enables him to come into our fears and to draw us by faith into his peace. Jesus stood before those disciples in those locked rooms as the resurrected Lord. We've been thinking about Jesus in John's Gospel being someone greater who's come to do something bigger. And here we have it again in chapter 20. He is someone greater. He is the God-man who knows our fears, who confronts our fears, who has overcome our fears. But he comes as also the one who has come to do something bigger. He has dealt with the biggest fear that faces humanity, the fear of death. And he has conquered that fear and he's showing the disciples that he's done that now through his resurrection and through his appearance to them. And he's saying to us when he says, peace be with you, what he's saying is, see all your fears through me. Don't see them in your circumstances. See all your fears through me. He can deal with our fears. Jesus is bigger than our fears and our anxieties and our worries. Jesus is bigger than coronavirus. And when we see our lives through him as the resurrected Lord, then Jesus comes to us and moves us from fear to faith. Wherever our hiding place is this morning, wherever our place of lockdown is this morning, Jesus stands in front of us and invites us to receive his peace. Peace that is not found in circumstances, but is found in relationship, our relationship with him. And that is what Jesus invites us to receive today. So in your hiding place, in your place of lockdown, may Jesus stand before you this morning and may you open your life to receive him in faith. And as you do that, may you know what it means to own Jesus as Lord 
the risen Lord who can conquer your fears and bring you into a place of faith in him and in his work. If you'd like to explore these ideas a little bit more, then uh, I'm going to be doing a, a longer, more detailed talk for adults uh, at uh, the end of uh, our morning together. Stick around and uh, have a listen to that. Um, but if not, my prayer is that you might experience Jesus this morning moving you from fear to faith. Enjoy the rest of the service and enjoy the rest of your day.